God, to you our hearts are open, all desires known. From you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The glory and excelsis is found in the hymnal 280 for the music. that you can share uh, the things that are important to you and your church uh, 
participation uh, with the rest of the congregation as well. So uh, all of those things are exciting uh, things that we will be proposing to develop and do uh, in, in the future as a result of, of the uh, retreat experience that we had this weekend. Are, are there other <coughs> announcements that, that need to come to our attention? Then our service continues now. Oh, one other thing I would say. I rescued from one of our churches that closed a Bible. And so this is more than a symbol. When, when, we, <laughs> when we read our lessons in, in Scripture, they come from this text. Uh, even though you're seeing it printed in your bulletin in an insert uh, and can easily follow it there, uh, uh, this is the Bible that was at St. Thomas uh, uh, Campbellsville, where Carl Oscar, previous rector before he was the rector here, was, was the priest in charge there. That church has closed, but we rescued their Bible. The, the other thing I call your attention to, last week we had a little bit of a catastrophe with our <coughs> Paschal candle because of the uh, fan up above here and, and the uh, and candle flamed a little bit more than it was supposed to and all that kind of thing. It, this is a hollow candle with another candle inside it, uh, so that it, it's not, uh, it, it's a real candle in a sense. It, it was made to have another candle burn on it. So this morning, following the spirit of, of Carl Musk, who liked electric candles, uh, we have an electric candle on here, which the fan won't blow out. So <laughs> that, uh, I make that explanation as well this morning to uh, uh, regroup from what happened last week. This, this one uh, is guaranteed to burn for 250 hours uh, without going out, and the, the fan won't pull it out either. So, so we share that with you this morning. So. If, if there are no other announcements that need to be made, our service continues with the readings of the Word of God. reading is from Acts. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found anyone who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias? He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here, 
has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for today, Psalm 30, is found in your pamphlet insert. Please read responsibly at the even verse. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cry out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, the servants of his, and thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping in the end of the night, the joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. And you delivered us, and I was still fear. I cried to you, O Lord, I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Our second reading is from Revelation. I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the sea, or under the earth and in the sea, and all that is in them singing, to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and turn in the hymn to him 205 for Christ and all rejoice.
showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and called the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten the belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which you would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. The Lord grant his blessing, the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and fittingly proclaim his holy gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In my preparation for the sermon this morning, I decided I was not going to, to preach on uh, Peter put on clothes and jumped into the sea because he was naked. There's another translation that makes a little bit more sense out of that that says that he put on his vest and jumped into the sea because he was stripped down. But uh, I guess you prepare to swim, you don't have a lot of clothes on. But I'm not going to preach on that text. I'm also not going to preach on uh, 254 fish, whatever the significance of that number might be. I'll leave that as for another day to uh, resolve that mystery as well. Today is the third Sunday of Easter. We recall today how Jesus made himself known in the breaking of bread. Now the breaking of bread was an action. The emphasis that we have in looking at the breaking of bread 
is to look at what Jesus did, not at the bread, what it is, but what Jesus did with it. He took it, he broke it, he gave it, and then he told the disciples what to do with it. Take, eat, recall me. Those were his instructions. And this is the theme of today's collect, our opening prayer in the service. The church observes this mystery in the sacrament of Holy Communion. In every Eucharist, we affirm the presence of our risen Lord who continues in this way to share his life with us. A verse of a hymn says, be known to us in the breaking of bread, but do not then depart. Savior, abide with us and spread your table in our heart. Another hymn says, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives. He lives. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, he lives, he lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. The hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find, none other is so loving, so good, and kind. Today's gospel account is from the Gospel of John about Jesus having breakfast with his disciples after his resurrection. How special it was for all of us on Easter Sunday morning to have breakfast here together. What a joy that was. Now some of what I'm telling you this morning, I have said before, but I think it is worth repeating. For a long time, it was the tradition of the church on this Sunday, the third Sunday of Easter, to read John's gospel account of Jesus appearing the third time to his disciples after his resurrection. When they had returned to Galilee, and gone back to fishing. They had fished all night, and they caught nothing. Then Jesus came to them. The disciples did not recognize Jesus at first. After Jesus encouraged them, their luck changed, so that they caught so many fish they could hardly haul them in. And when they had come to shore, Jesus took bread and gave it to them. Then, by what Jesus did with them, they knew it was the Lord. Some congregations of our church make it their custom to have breakfast on the shore. They gather on this Sunday on the banks of a body of water, a lake, or a river to have breakfast and hold a service of Holy Communion there. Our cathedral congregation in Louisville did this for many years on the nearby banks of the Ohio. And when I was an army chaplain stationed in Darmstadt, Germany, I took my chapel congregation to a Protestant convent where there was a lake. The sisters had been denied originally a permit to build on this land because the city said it was outside the city and there was no provision there for water. But the sisters prayed and started to dig a well, which turned into an artesian well, a spring that brought forth so much water that it filled a whole lake, which they named appropriately the Sea of Galilee. So I took my congregation when I was in Germany on this Sunday to the Sea of Galilee to have breakfast on the shore. 
And while I was set up for communion there next to the lake, I looked at the lake and saw goldfish that had come up to the shore. I immediately thought and the fish wanted this little wafer that I had, thinking it was fish food for them. And I still finally remember that at that breakfast on the shore, there were more fish there than people in my congregation who attended. The important thing is for us to know today that Jesus is with us and it is our duty to make him known. Jesus said to his disciples, everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. You are witnesses of these things. Now we are his witnesses today. As we heard in the gospel account today, when the disciples had gone back to fishing, try as hard as they could, left to their own devices, they caught nothing. But Jesus, with his encouragement, they caught so many fish they could hardly haul them in. Their lives were enriched, you see, beyond measure because Jesus was there with them. The same is true of our lives today. We know that Jesus is with us, and it is our duty to make him known here. Death did not stop him. He is risen from the dead, and he lives today. He lives, and because he lives, we will live also. So let us say it again. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. And now let us stand and find in our music and the bulletin this morning the hymn, I'm Going Fishing. Let us stand and sing. Peter said, I'm going fishing, so his friends went out with him. Through the night they labored watching, hauling empty nets back in. In the gray of early morning, Jesus, you came walking by. From the beach you called a greeting, cast out on the other side. Soon their nets were filled to brimming, someone cried, it is the Lord. Jumping in, he started swimming, cast your net on the shore. Guiding them to better waters, eating fish and sharing bread. You showed Peter and the others you were risen from the dead. Risen Christ, you send us fishing. God's great sea is everywhere. You have guided us in mission, you have given love to share. Through the years our church has heard you, we have answered your great call. Cast your nets where I have told you, bring my word of love to all. Lord, be with our congregation, 
by your Spirit send us forth. May we care for your creation. May we work for peace on earth in our worship, in our giving. May we know, Lord, you are living, guiding us in ministry. The Nicene Creed is found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Bishop Curry, our presiding bishop, for Bishop White, our own bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, especially Father Jim, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for this congregation, for those who are present and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory and all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. God, our Father, whose Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, in a wonderful sacrament, has left us a memorial of his passion, grant us so to venerate the sacred mysteries of his body and blood, that we may ever perceive within ourselves the fruit of his redemption, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the nation, and all the world peace and concord, and to us and all your servants eternal life in your heavenly kingdom, through Christ our Lord.
Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
particularly a revival to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. By his life and life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith. With thanks to you.
serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Hymn 210, the day of resurrection.